Welcome back to another Zoom call here uh, on Thursday afternoon. Want to thank Jaron for coming on with us today. We're excited to bring him uh, aboard after uh, the time he spent with us with the go-go during the regular season um, and now heading down to Orlando for the uh, restart. Um, we'll get started with the questions here uh, in just one second. Um, as we've done for these last couple ones, please just use the raise hand feature. Um, or uh, you can also direct message me. Um, either way, we'll uh, get to everyone's questions if we can. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, Chris Miller, who I'm sure has a DeMatha question. Oh, I see you got jokes today, Scotty. Good one. Uh, Jaron, one DeMatha, if we're going to get this thing started right. Uh, congratulations, my man, thank on you, thank uh, you. You know, signing with the team. I'm curious to know, um, you know, obviously before the pandemic started and during it, how have you been able to kind of deal and process with all of this while also trying to ultimately get back to the NBA? Uh, just staying ready, you know, staying ready for my opportunity, doing doing my training, you know, being here, I got to, you know, work out on my high school at DeMatha. So, you know, um, just being able to stay ready, stay in shape and, and just wait on that phone call. It's been, it was exciting. Just a quick follow-up. You talked about going back to the high school to kind of get some work in. You were also doing some community events. Can you talk about the partnership that you had with your brother, with Mumu, and also with Victor Oladipo, what you guys were able to accomplish? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, this area, you know, they made us who we are. So, you know, any, any chance we get to give back, especially during something crazy, this pandemic like this, you know, any opportunity we're going to jump at. So, you know, we came together and was like, how can we give back and, you know, um, we talked to, you know, some other people we know and we just joined together and just, you know, gave back meals and just we just try to do what we can. Appreciate it, brother. Welcome home. Thank you. Fred. Hey, Jaron, congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, being, being from the area, uh, I, I, I'm just wondering what your relationship, because obviously you, you grew up with the NBA and you'd assume somebody from the area would be lifelong Wizards or something like that. I'm wondering what, what your relationship was with the Wizards as a kid. Uh, well, you know, my, my dad played with them. He coached with them. You know, I was always around the locker room, uh, you know, uh, being the ball boy. So, you know, it was it really, really actually feels like home to me. You know, to be able to call myself a wizard is, is really a dream come true. Like, it's almost like I, I know, you know, the, the equipment guys. I know people who have been around for a long time. So it's really, really just feels like home. Chase. Hey, what's up, Jerry? And congrats. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, how did the deal come together? because obviously you were part of the organization with the go-go and then, you know, Davis Bertans opted out. Like, what was the timeline for you? Were you surprised when it came about? Um, for me, it was just always staying ready, you know, like being with the go-go, you know, I, f I felt like my opportunity was coming, but, you know, as the season went on and on, you know, um, it wasn't there, but, you know, I just felt like eventually I was going to get that call. And, um, you know, I was devastated, you know, when um, the pandemic happened and our season had to get canceled. But at the same time, I stayed ready. And, um, you know, once I heard Bertans was, uh, was opting out, you know, I just I – I got a little excited, but, you know, I didn't want to get my hopes up too high. But, you know, when that phone call came, it was just like a dream come true. I uh, see Chris's hand still up. I don't know if that's from before or uh, you got another one, but I don't see anybody else uh, with a hand yeah. right. Appreciate yeah, it. thanks, Scott. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Jaron, going down there, kind of, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, this is a team that is trying to develop young players, and obviously if Brad decides to go down there, this team's going to be trying to push to the playoffs also. How do you see yourself fitting into this mix? Uh, just helping them win. You know, anything I can do. You know, I feel like I, I have a lot of different, you know, assets to my game, whether it's defense, making shots, creating – just, you know, being somebody that can, that can help the team win. You know, I've been, I've been in the playoffs a, a few times. You know, I've, I've, you know, played in the playoffs, started games in the playoffs. So just someone that can help the team going forward. And, you know, I feel like going down there is a, is a real opportunity. You know, um, you know, hopefully Brad comes. But, you know, if he decides not to, I feel like we're still going to have an opportunity in, to take a step forward. And, you know, I feel like, you know, any time you can get into the playoffs, it's, it's taking a step forward. So, you know, whether it's that if it's this year or you know looking towards next year, you know to when everybody's come back and everybody's healthy, I feel like it can really be you know a jump forward for the organization. 
Charla. Hey there, you mentioned um, that it was a dream come true. Just elaborate on that a little more because being going to DeMatha, being from DC, growing up, as you said, in the Wizards organization, I just want to hear more about your feelings and when you got that phone call and when that deal went through the other day. Uh, it was huge. Like, like, like you said, you know, I, I've been around the Wizards, been around this area my, my entire life. So, you know, um, being a fan, you know, having my dad play for them, being a ball boy and seeing, seeing all those players come through, you know, um, Jawan Howard, Rod Strickland, Chris Weber, you know, those guys, you know, are people I looked up to, people I wanted to be like. And for actually to finally be able to put on that jersey, it, it means a lot. You know, actually when I got the phone call and, and my agent told me, I was kind of quiet for like a little bit because it's just like it was unreal. Like just to be able to put on that jersey, like I said, and, you know, being around, you know, really, really feels like home and it, everyone feels like family. Congratulations. Thank you. Karita. Hi, good afternoon. I just wanted to get your thoughts on building chemistry with your teammates, being that it's such a short time frame with training camp uh, down in Orlando. Um, I think just going down there, being able to have three weeks before a game is, is definitely going to help a lot. You know, um, you know, we, we kind of know each other's games, but to actually be able to play with each other for three weeks before we have to start a game is, is I think, going to be great. So, you know, um, once I get in there with these guys, you know, I feel like it's just basketball and, you know, having three weeks to practice and do a training camp is definitely going to go a long way. Fred? Hey, Jared, I'm also, I'm also curious. The Wizards talk a lot about how the go-go or an extension of, of the NBA club. And, and I'm wondering from your experience, you've now, you've played in the NBA and other places and, and you've kind of gone through the process of working your way up with the go-go and getting that contract. What was that process like for you? And, and what did you see from the Wizards as an, as an organization uh, that kind of either helped you along or, or that helped you through that process? Well, you know, as soon as, soon as, uh, I got the call to come play with the Go-Go. Uh, they treated me like family. That was first. You know, they, they treated me like like I was one of their guys. You know, um, I talked to Tommy. I talked to the coaches. I was talking to, to a lot of people. So, you know, um, that, you know, helped me out to begin with because, you know, I, when I first got to the G League, it just – it felt like, you know, I was taking a step down. But really, I wasn't. It was just my journey. And um, when, I, when I got to the G League and was playing, you know, all those games, we were playing against a lot of, you know, really good players. So um, that definitely helped me out, you know, helped me to be able to – to do what I can, you know, um, coach, you know, Rich really helped me out a lot, you know, putting the ball in my hands and being able to let me be the player that, that he knows I can be. So, you know, um, just having that, that family feeling, you know, having uh, Tommy and the, the guys on the Wizards really treat me, you know, like I was one of their own was, was a lot, was really big for me. Chase. Um, I, I'm sure, you know, when you signed with the Go-Go, there was uh, a reaction within your family. You know, I, I talked to your dad. He was really excited. But what was it like when you signed with the Wizards? I mean, what was the reaction from your dad, your brothers, anyone else who might be interested? Um, everyone was excited for me. You know, obviously, like you said, I, you know, playing with the Go-Go was my first time, you know, actually playing and being home like that, you know, since high school. And that, that was exciting for everybody. But for actually to actually be on the Wizards and be able to call myself a Wizard, um, not only my family, but, you know, all my friends and even just people from the city that know, that know me, you know, know that I'm from here were really excited for me. And, you know, um, that type of support really meant a lot. I don't see anybody else's, uh, hand. oh, sorry. Here's the one, uh, Jay Warner. Yeah, Jerry, and do you remember at what age you were able to beat your father in basketball and what his reaction was? Uh, yeah, I definitely remember because it was the first and the last time he played me. So uh, I think I was about 12. I think it was, it was 12 years, 12 or 13. And, you know, he was still, you know, felt like he could play a little bit. But, um, you know, that's when I was really stepping into my own as a player. So, you know, I, I ended up beating him one-on-one -on -one and, and he was done. That was it. He was – he. That's when he was like, oh, I, must, I got a player right here and one of my sons. So uh, it was exciting for me. I finally got to beat him. And, you know, I've always wanted to play him again, kept trying to play him, but he was done after that. 
he shake your hand? What was his reaction after that? Now he was pretty upset, but he was I think he was excited at the same time to know that, you know, um, I was actually going, growing into my own and actually becoming a really good player. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Jaren, it's Chris again. I'm, I'm curious when you first uh, when you first came back, you walked into the practice facility and saw Dave Atkins. Did you think, oh my God, this is the Breakfast Club all over again? <laughs> I, actually, I was really excited. You know, I, I um, Coach Atkins was one of the guys who who really helped me become the player I am today. So um, when he got into the NBA, we really couldn't work together as much as we used to because of you know the rules. You know, it was it was tough for me, but at the same time, you know, I was excited for him, but now to be able to get back with him is, is going to be great for my career. And I know he's excited about it too, but you know, um, I'm ready to put that work in with coach Atkins because he, he's definitely one of the, one of the guys who helped me become the player I am today. Thank you. Any, anybody else? I don't see any other hands raised, but if somebody has a question, please go ahead. And if not, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Hi. My question is that, do you have some expectation play with Bradley Beal? To expectations playing with Brad? Yeah. Um, I mean, to see what he's been doing has it's been amazing, you know. Um, so to be able to get out there on the court with a player like that, you know, it's, it's almost like in my career, I played with, you know, Carmelo Anthony. I played with yeah. Jimmy Butler. You know, I played with players like that. So, you know, um, for me, he's, he's right up in that category with them. So. You know, to be able to get get on the court with him is just going to be exciting, too. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jaron, for joining us this afternoon. Um, we will uh, be sending out uh, information for uh, our next round of calls uh, later on today. And uh, as always, we'll have the, uh, the um, link to this one as well if you were not able to record. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.